Welcome to all the bold, courageous, and powerful women tuning into Find Your Fabulous. I'm your host, Dr. Diane, and it's time to ignite your full power. Are you ready to embrace your talents and worth and unleash the wise goddess within? I've got the information, inspiration, and revelation you need to ignite your personal power so you can stop playing small and reclaim the passion and purpose that we all hold within us. Connect with other powerful spiritual women who yearn to be fully expressed. The world needs you, full power. Let me guide you to find your fabulous and ignite your inner goddess. It all starts now on the Find Your Fabulous Show. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Diane Garrison, and you are listening to Find Your Fabulous on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience the pathway to finding your fabulous. Join us every first and third Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Central Time, where we will have information inspiration, and revelation to help you ignite your personal power and reclaim the passion and purpose we all hold within us. I have here with me today my very special guest, fellow women's empowerment and transformational life coach, Lisa Andrea, and my beautiful producer, Emily. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for inviting me. You are very welcome. In today's mind-blowing episode, Lisa Andrea and I will talk about the lack of confidence that troubles so many women despite an abundance of gifts and talents. Then we will unpack the secrets to building that confidence so you can leap into the life you've always dreamed of, becoming your badass self. But first, let me introduce Lisa. Lisa Andrea is a transformational life coach with Ladies Who Leap Coaching. She is an intuitive and skilled coach that takes women from stuck, scared, and lost to clear, confident, and reawakened. Using several modalities that clear negative emotions, remove limiting beliefs, and raise awareness of their internal aspects of being, She is able to set her clients up for success in reaching goals and following their dreams. She has experienced what it takes to make a transformation and loves helping other women to do the same. Lisa is also the host of the popular Ladies Who Leap podcast, which I will soon be a guest on, and leads a community of supported women in her Facebook group, Ladies Who Leap Club. When she's not working, Lisa is watching movies, eating at great restaurants, cooking, singing with local bands, and going out to stand up, paddleboard, I can't do that, a renter area. (laughs) That sounds like great fun. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you, Diane. It's so great to be here. Lisa, I always start the interview by asking my guest, What does being full power mean to you? And how did you step into your personal power? I know coaching is not your first career, so please tell us your story. So full power means to me having full acceptance of yourself, your imperfections, as someone just said recently, warts and all, (laughs) and being 100% content with your vulnerability, and your authenticity and moving ahead so that you are secure and strong and no one can take advantage of you. That to me is full power. And that's taken a lifetime for me to get there. I'll be honest. I started out in Connecticut as a real nerdy (laughs) when I got 10 years old, which was terrible back then. I mean, this is, and I was picked on or I was, I I mastered the art of invisibility. One of those two Mm. things. Yeah, so it wasn't a really good uh, period in my life. I was into school, though, and I excelled and I was smart. And so I I got into and was like the kind of the teacher's pet, as they said back then. 
uh, and that was really fun. But the picking on, the not being the popular kid, understanding that I'm ugly actually made me feel like I deserve to be treated poorly. You accept yeah. that and you feel you deserve it. And that stays with you throughout your whole life. I mean, until you right. start really working on it, which has been for me the last four or five years, it stays with you. And that's where it makes, you may be confident outwardly, but you are putting on a persona or a fake persona in some way because you're hiding inside how you really feel. And then it allows other people to come in, take advantage of you and treat you poorly because you feel you deserve it, right? Right. I gotcha. So, yeah. So I worked 41 years in the telecom industry, very mm -hmm. stressful, very, you know, I, I got up to the point where I was an account manager, of very, huge, large accounts on team wow. and there was quotas and it was just really stressful. Um, I also was in a marriage during that period. Mm -hmm. And in 2003, after getting married in 1997, being with the person for five years before that, I sat up one day and I said, I don't know who I am. I completely mm. lost who I was. All friend, close friends were gone. I focused everything on his life, his friends, his hobbies, his interests, and I completely lost myself. And this is with a mother who told me, don't do that. Well, you know, it, it's very nice. And she was a, a fantastic mom. But unfortunately, when you have that background of not feeling you deserve to be treated well, you deserve to be put as the first, you know, some type of attention and respect you don't get it. And you think that that's normal. Right, Lisa, as a psychologist for 30 years, I can verify this. I hear this story over and over and over again. It's so common. Yeah. So in 2003, I woke up, I told my husband at the time, I don't know, I'm going to be on a journey to find myself. I don't mm. know I'm going to be included in it. And I have to give him a lot of credit because he went, we went to couples counseling, we went to oh. separate counseling. In the end, by 2008, I figured out this wasn't the right person for me and I needed to move on. It was not too difficult. We didn't have any children. I don't have children. So it made it a little bit easier, but it really put me on a path to continue to discover myself, to continue to feel worthy of acceptance. Hey, I went through a lot, a couple more longer relationships um, that weren't good at all, but I, so I repeated those patterns, right? Even with therapy, I repeated those patterns. And then, um, I had a wake up, wake up call in 2018 mm. work wise, where I had retired from the, um, let's see. So December of 2018, I had retired. Yeah. Um, no, excuse me, 2013, I had retired went back into the industry, got several jobs. And then finally in October of 2018, the boss made me cry twice. Wow. I was in my fifties, mid fifties. I'm like, no, 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 this isn't going to happen. And my blood pressure was up. I, my, I said, no, this is not going to happen. So I asked my financial advisor, find me some money. I need to take a sabbatical. I need to reinvent myself. I need to figure out this whole work thing. And I did. I took six months off. I learned about life coaching, ah. had no idea about it, got my certification, worked with some clients, had to go back to work in April of 2019 because I wasn't of the retirement age yet. I tried to get into other industries. It didn't quite work out. So I went back into my same telecom industry, but I downgraded myself. I took a, a pretty good cut in pay for my own well-being, my emotional well-being. And even though the struggle with the money was there, my emotional well-being was much better. I didn't have the same level of stress. I didn't need, and, and think about it, the lower pay when I was responsible, I had my own home and everything, wasn't even as great as the emotional well-being of being completely stressed out at work. It's a powerful stress when you have that every day. So I worked there, found a niche that was fantastic. I We went through the whole COVID thing and by... Mm -hmm. Yeah, by December of 2022, I fully recovered. I, f I mean, I fully retired and I was able to dedicate 100% to life coaching women. So I'm a transformation coach. I actually made some changes at that moment, changed to Ladies Who Leap. I had a little session with a business coach and the word leap came out. And I said, oh, Ladies Who Leap, leaping out of your comfort zone. That's where the growth happens. Oh my gosh, what a great idea. So that's where that came from. And I've been working on that ever since. I have learned more and more different ways to help people through neuro-linguistic programming, uh -huh. 
an assessment tool that I use. That's about the awareness. That's called Bean Profile, and that's out of Australia. So I'm, I've got so many more wonderful tools. Unfortunately, right when I started on that new journey, well, we can we can wait and talk about this some other time if you want, but I did get hit with a uh, breast cancer diagnosis. So I lived oh, through that. Nice share. Yeah. yeah. Well, I lived through that, but my as soon as I got the call, I thought, no, this is just going to be a blip. This is going to yes. be a spunk in my life. It's not going to be a big deal. And I kept that mindset the whole time. And sure enough, other than the couple surgeries and eight months of it, actually, it was detected early. It was not in the lymph nodes. I didn't, um, thankfully, I didn't need any radiation or any chemo. And I feel fantastic now after that period. I do know and understand that there are women that have a lot of women, unfortunately, and some that I know right now that are going through a big struggle on that. Yes. But constantly thinking that this is something you're going to overcome. You're going to learn from this challenge. You're going to understand how strong you really are. Talk about full power. Yes. When they go through these struggles, they have to tap into that full power. There is no choice in the matter. Physically and emotionally and mentally, they have to tap into their full power. And the doctors say and have told me, wow, you're so positive when you come in. That's important. We're glad that you're positive because it makes our job easier, actually. Right. That positivity, right, helps everything to heal better. Yeah. So you used a lot of confidence in your journey with breast cancer. But just give us a little tease. Why did you choose women and confidence as your primary focus for your beautiful coaching practice. What was it that spoke to you about that? Well, I feel like confidence is wrapped up into a lot of different things, right? Being aware of yourself, being okay with making mistakes and not dwell, you know, dwelling on them, being able to, in other words, you have to be confident in order to move forward and transform yourself. So as a transformation coach, it is really important for women to be in their full power, to be fully confident about themselves in order to make that transformation. How are you going to take a first step, even if it's a baby step, if you don't feel confident in knowing that anything or any mistake that you may make is not going to ruin everything. But if you don't take that step, you'll ruin your confidence, right? Right. Confidence kind of underlines the whole journey you're talking about, right? And as you make these steps and learn more about yourself, then you gain more confidence. So it's this wonderful loop of, or spiral of becoming, right? Yeah, instead of the bad spiral that we talk about. It's right, down into therapy. the rabbit hole. Instead of that, it's the one of becoming larger and larger and more authentically yourself and able to put yourself out in the world more fully. Yeah. Vulnerability is actually, I'll be honest, is something that I have struggled with because of that background of being picked on and not feeling deserving of being treated well. Right. So I have struggled with my own vulnerability in, mm. in allowing people to see who I am and, and warts and all and, and being imperfect and being okay with being imperfect. It's, it's been, it's been a, a quite a journey myself. So I think what I do is I fully understand that what other women are going through because I'm, I'm going through it myself too. Right. We teach what we're learning, right? <laughs> I'm my ideal client. It's the I'd most say. powerful, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Lisa, it's time for us to head into a break. You are listening to Dr. Diane and the Find Your Fabulous show. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Lisa and I will continue to unpack this troubling epidem epidemic of talented women who lack confidence in themselves. But before we break, Lisa, how can our listeners reach out to you? Well, ladieswholeap.com is my website. There's buttons all over the place to set up a Let's Connect call. I'd love to talk to women and see what it is that's bothering them. I do have a way to help them with leapwithconfidence.com. It's just three five-minute videos, and you watch them at your leisure and at your pace to be able to leap into something brand new with confidence. Beautiful. And for all things fabulous, including my coaching services and free empowerment resources, you can check out my website at fullpowerwomen.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Hello, we're back on Find Your Fabulous with Dr. Diane. My guest today is women's transformational life coach, Lisa Andrea. And we are discussing the troubling epidemic of talented women who lack confidence in themselves. Before we begin to talk about how you help clients build confidence, let's have some juicy conversation to dig into the cultural beliefs and mindsets and personal beliefs that keep women from developing confidence. You know, Lisa, I just got back from a fabulous retreat in Mallorca, Spain, with some really high-powered women. And universally, these women, I mean, I'm talking attorneys and doctors and authors and actors, they were stuck in these same patterns of playing small. So let's start exploring. What are your thoughts on this? Why do women play small? Well, like I was saying before, confidence is not really being comfortable in your own skin and having that fear that something you say is going to hurt someone. Because when we grow up as children, as girls, we were told you have to be a nice girl. You have to the do good girl, what right. other, the good girl. You have to do what other people want you to do. And in, in my case, and I'm sure that, like you said, there's a lot of other people, I wanted girls to like me. I wanted right. food. So what could I do? I'm wanting everybody to like you as you, you bend and you shape shift to get that outcome. Well, how can you be truly confident about yourself when you're actually being somebody else just so that somebody people will like you? And so one of the things I went through a breakthrough session during my training through the mm -hmm. neuro-linguistic programming, it's called mental and emotional release. And they elicit right off the bat, your values. And my values from my unconscious mind, one word that came out was little. I was like, well, what does little have to do with it? Guess what? I was making myself little in order to make sure I don't outshine the friends that I have or the man that I was with, because then they wouldn't like me and they wouldn't want to be with me. So there's no confidence in that. Even though outwardly I could kind of act like I'm confident because you can take on a fake persona and act that way. And inside, I didn't feel that way. So that's where making yourself smaller comes from. You don't want people to not like you. So if you overshine them, they're not going to like you. That's the big fear, right? So that good girl syndrome and the people pleasing that comes from that, because number one, we want to be loved. And the fear is if we shine brightly and if we you know, really put ourselves out there, then we're going to make other people feel bad. And as women, we never want to make other people feel bad, but it's this kind of crazy thing. Why does everybody else count in front of us? Well, you know, I, I use the word patriarchy <laughs> way too often, but, but it's true. 5,000 years of a patriarchal society of a patriarchal culture where women's role to society was in caretaking of others. That's, you know, that's why we got to be alive. We were there to take care of others. And if we didn't do that, there would be some dire consequences, right? Yeah. So it, I mean, we're talking on many, 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 many thousands of generations of women who believe that, you know, our job is to take care of others, to please others, to make other people comfortable. And, you know, quite frankly, because of these superpowers we have in nurturing, the world continues to spin and <laughs> families happen and everything else happens. And, oh, we have a little animal I, friend joining us. Yes, go in your chair. Actually, it's opening the door. <laughs> Very good. Well, Puppy wants <laughs> to learn about confidence and patriarchy. Okay. She so, is... Oh, go ahead. Look. So this... This society, you know, these traits are really ingrained and they come taught to us, you know, from our mothers and their our grandmothers and their mothers and many, many, many generations back. And in fact, if you, you know, remember your history back in, you know, the medieval times and beyond, if you dared as a woman to show your gifts to shine briefly, uh, brightly, to have any kind of superpowers in any way, you were called a witch and you were drowned or stoned or burned at the stake. You know, we weren't allowed. So our mothers, our ancient mothers told us not to shine bright. 
it was the way for us to survive. And any powers we did have was done covertly, right? Right. Um, and I think it evolved even to the fact that there are other women that also adopted that behavior. So now I feel like as we take back our power, we need to rely or not rely, we need to support each other, women supporting women, so that we can overcome that generational, that historical type of society norm where if you shine, you're going to be put on you know that pedestal and, and you're not doing the right thing. No, we should support each other, allow each other to shine. Let another friend shine and support that and be happy for them and appreciate right. their friendship. And that's breaking the old, the other old model of women seeing other women as competition, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the old times, before the women's movement and all that, it was as if there were only a few good men and we're all fighting to win them, <laughs> you know? So it's competition. And even as women have entered in more into professions and the corporate world, there can still be that sense of competition. Although I think the most thriving organizations are ones that encourage, you know, that have women's organizations within them and encourage the women to support one another. Because, you know, if I support you shining bright, then I get some of the shine on me too. So it's all... It, it reflects back on us and it helps us all to feel more empowered. Yeah, that rising tide lifts all boats can be applied to this. If we lift each other up, then we lift all of us up as a community. Yeah. So let's talk about a huge problem in a lot of professional women or high achieving women, perfectionism. You don't know anything about that, do you, Lisa? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't think there's any woman alive that doesn't have that as an issue, like a little checkbox on the things that they really overdo on themselves. Yeah. Right. So this perfectionism thing that is another epidemic, you know, that as women were allowed into professions, into financial independence, into opening their own businesses, into running for politics, it was, uh, you know, not... Um, we weren't welcomed with open arms by the male community that had been in power for 5,000 years, you know? So we had to kind of like struggle and grapple to, to move up the ladder or to be seen in, you know, the work world at all. And in order to do that, we became perfectionists. Like we were going to be the best at what, whatever we did. Because the truth of the matter is we had to be like 10 times as good as the guys in the room to get any noticeability at all. We could enter into this corporate role, world and role, but we could feel really invisible. Yeah, it's out of necessity. And I mean, all of this started, this perfectionism in a way is out of necessity. We knew that we could not move up and break that glass ceiling unless we were better hundred times better, 200 times better, way better than our uh, colleagues, the male colleagues, because we were women. We had no choice. So out of necessity, the perfectionism was, I think, adopted simply because we thought we cannot make a mistake. When in reality, mistakes are what teach us lessons. It's how successful people became successful. So understanding that, you know, even as women, when we make a mistake, it's amplified. It's right up until today's society. I mean, we see that politics and things like that. We can't, we feel that we can't make a mistake, but understanding deep down that perfectionism does not serve you well, that yes, you can make a mistake and recover from it. And understanding that, I hate to put it this way, but most women at that level of executives, you know, that executive level are actually even better in what they do, because we have that compassion, we have a high level of it, intuition, and we use that really, really well. So we're great assets to any companies. And the companies that realize that and allow us to flourish and be who we are can get way more success out of the teams that we manage. Absolutely. But let's talk about, you know, perfectionism as a, a I call it a, a curse unto ourselves because with that 
high achieving, high expectations, we tend to have what I call a very strong inner mean girl. Like we're very judgmental. We're very critical. We're afraid others are going to judge us. So we are over judging ourselves, which makes us afraid to take risks and do things because, you know, we're afraid that we'll be perceived perceived as failures or as too pushy or, you know, like, so men get to be assertive and we're aggressive, you know, <laughs> right? So it's, it's like this, I mean, I was one burnt out perfectionist cookie when I started the pathway that really began my journey to becoming a women's empowerment coach. I mean, I was so hard on myself I was trying to do everything perfectly, like run my own private practice, raise two teenage daughters, keep, you know, the household running and doing it all at, you know, exceptional levels. And I just, I burnt out yeah. and it was, that was the pathway to me actually finding myself, my true confidence, my true power. Yeah. Because taking the time to really give yourself some uh, attention, you know, taking the deep breaths, taking the walk, getting out into the nature, um, feeling and understanding that uh, mistakes are going to be made and, and it's just going to happen. There's no way that you can avoid making any kind of mistakes, but being okay with it and using it as a lesson and learning from it. Taking that time for yourself means that you can actually give to others much more fully. Right. You can't serve from an empty cup. So fill yours first and, yeah. you know, that's the real lesson, right? If I put myself first, if I treat myself with the love, the compassion, the patience, the forgiveness that I do, everyone else, well, everyone will thrive. Mm -hmm. It's time for us to move into another break, my friend. You are listening to Dr. Diane and the Find Your Fabulous show. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Lisa and I will continue to unpack this epidemic of trouble of talented women who lack confidence in themselves. But before we break, Lisa, how can our listeners reach out to you? Well, they can go to ladiesuleep.com and press all the, any of the buttons that are on there to be able to set up a Let's Connect call. I'd love to talk to them. Beautiful. And for all things fabulous, including my coaching services and free empowerment resources, you can check out my website at fullpowerwomen.com. There's lots of juiciness there for you. All right, we're headed into a short break. Hello, we're back on Find Your Fabulous with more Dr. Diane. My guest today is transformational life coach, Lisa Andrea. And we are discussing the troubling epidemic of talented, gifted women who lack confidence in themselves and how Lisa helps them build that confidence and step into their badass selves. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to start unpacking how you help women build their confidence. Well, I have what I call the Power Leap Program. And I have it in certain periods, three, six, and nine, and uh, three, six, and 12 months, excuse me. First thing I do is, you know, in order for you to make any transformation, you have to be, you have to have a sense of awareness of yourself. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is put them through what I have found from coming out of Australia, what's called the being profile. It's an actual snapshot in time of how you are being in the world, how others perceive you, how you perceive the world, how you are in, in the world around you. And it gives you a health score of 31 aspects of being in four different categories you take this, it's an, it's amazing. I'm going to tell you because every person that I have done this with has had a eye opening. I mean, that's the words they actually use in the testimonial. It was eye opening, sometimes confrontational because it might be something you didn't, you may have known about yourself, but you really didn't want to confront. So it opens up, yeah, your full awareness of what parts of you, like I said, in my case, vulnerability was an issue. So you'll see that and you'll go through with a practitioner like myself, I would go through a two hour debrief and we'll, we'll unpack this and get you to a point where you truly understand what is it that's creating this being of yourself that really isn't confident, that isn't able to move forward, that isn't able to transform into the life that you want to have and the life that you want to, that you really want to, a person you want to be. 
Right. From that, we'll work into finding out what areas, what, what area of life that you want to really transform. Is it your family? Is it career? Is it physical health? Is it your personal growth and development? And then take that and have what is called a breakthrough session. It's a good six to seven hours total broken up, but it opens you up your baggage. It, it, we figure out what is your true root cause of why you feel stuck, why you're not able to be the confident self that you want to be. What mm -hmm. is it that's really at the root of your issue? And then taking that and going through timeline therapy to release oh. that, release that, release whatever limiting beliefs came up, like I'm not worthy, I don't love myself, I deserve to be treated poorly, whatever those negative beliefs are. It's a full process and it includes eliciting values before the release and after the release to see your transformation. I also do hypnotherapy afterwards to really solicit, mm -hmm. solidify now that you have these things released, let's talk about what you want your life to be, what, how you want your habits to be every day, how you want to wake up every morning, and then kind of lock that in like the Tupperware top and hmm. hypnotherapy and then move forward. And then really there's four steps. There's four requisites for change and transformation. And that's the release, then setting goals. Then you have to take action. And then right. the final one is really, you know, uh, manif manifesting and motivating and setting boundaries and really having accountability. So that's where I come in. And the last two after that is to set that also to imagine yourself in five to 10 years. What right. do you be? What is what do you truly want? So now you've released the baggage that you've been carrying around and you want to understand what do I really want? And we put together your idea of that. And I put it actually in a manifestation statement and I record it so you can listen to that to manifest whenever you need that extra boost or daily if you want. And it talks about your ideal day. Where are you? Who are you? Where do you live? What are your surroundings? All of this is boosting you to get into a higher vibration of life. And it allows you to understand what your why is so that the universe can bring you your how. You'd be amazed. The ones that really get into this place that I work with, all of a sudden they're coming on my calls and they're going, oh my God, you don't, you can't believe it. I met this person and this happened and then that happened and then this happened. And I'm so, I get so excited because I love making, you know, helping women shine and, and being on their team and being their support system because a lot of women don't have that. That's what a transformation coach is about. It's someone who's in your corner and that's what I enjoy doing for them. Hmm. So let me review this. So first you do kind of an assessment to show people, give them a better snapshot of how they're functioning in the world. And then you have a, after you unpack that, a breakthrough session where you really start to tune into those self-defeating patterns and, and negative limiting beliefs that you've had, most of us have had since we're itty bitty. They say our basic belief systems are locked in by the time we're six or seven years old, believe it or not. Yes, it is. They just yeah. get finessed over time and buried deeper. <laughs> and so once you understand that, then you can begin that transformational process where you start to transform those limiting beliefs. And with, taking it, steps, yeah. Towards right, you. with with the truth of who you really are in the world today. Like, okay, so that was the reasonable interpretation of a child in adverse circumstances. But now, who who are you? Who have you become? And, and uh, like uh, letting go of the old to make room for the new. And then I love that you use hypnotherapy to kind of lock in those new visions of yourself even deeper because hypnotherapy takes us into the unconscious mind. And that's where all the problems come from as well. So we hold all our beliefs in our unconscious mind, whether they're good, bad, or ugly. And unfortunately, until before you do the work, about 75% of the beliefs in our unconscious mind are negative. Yeah. So yeah, self talk. Yeah. And, you know, and as my mentor says, Mary Morrissey, um, like a vision of what you want without action is just entertainment. So those action steps are so important. And I think what people get hooked up on, they think like they're going to have to, like, you know, blow up their whole life versus 
No, it's like these little baby steps, right, Lisa? You take one, which opens up some new things to you and makes natural the the next steps to take and you keep on taking those steps forward. And yeah, you're going to have some challenges and you're going to stumble because that's life. (laughs) Yeah. And most women can't say, okay, I hate what I'm doing. I'm unhappy in my position. I'm unhappy in my career, in this industry, whatever it is, and can just quit and move on to something else. No, no, no. Go through that self-discovery, go through the steps first to understand what it is that you want to do. And if you know, release the baggage so that you can take even taking the baby steps while you're working where you're oh, working. Absolutely. Don't blow, don't blow up your life where you're going through this process. It's in, in, in addition to, but as you learn how to better take care of yourself, you may find that how you function at work may shift a little bit like you, like demoting yourself and taking an easier role so that you have time and space to both do your coaching on the side and also to do your own personal development. And, you know, nobody's asking you to like blow up your life to, 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 you know, gain some confidence because that will not gain you confidence. Right. And then a lot of it too, is listening to your intuition. You're really listening to your higher power, your higher self, the universe, because once you kind of figure out, or if you already have a talent that other people have recognized and they come to you and they say, hey, I need your help. I know you're really good at this. And all of a sudden people start coming to you and you're going, whoa, I think this is something, there's something here I can unpack. Maybe I can do this for a living, helping others do this particular thing that I'm really good at. And I can create a whole business out of it. As a lot of women, they have people coming to them asking for their help before they even make the decision and realization that maybe this is what I can do. I mentored a lot of young women. I was mentored. And when I mentored and helped my friends even, I realized, oh, they really appreciated that. And I was good at it. That opened me up to say, oh, I want to help women to get over things and to earlier even in their lives, if not at some point in their life, if it's older, live the life that they actually want, be authentic to themselves, live what the way they want to live, what they were meant to do in life. Yeah. And um, I want to emphasize something that you said about this learning to tune into your inner wisdom, because part of the cultural patriarchal programming is to make us kind of slave to the opinion of others. Right. And we forget we have, you know, we're connected to the infinite. Everything is connected to the infinite. It's called the quantum field. And that's science. It's not, it's not woo woo. It's science. But if we learn to tune into our own inner wisdom, there is a treasure trove in there of wisdom. And we can connect from that inner spaciousness. We can connect to the wisdom of the divine as well, because I believe the creator's there wanting to support us and wanting us to move forward and become our bigger self, but we have to make the effort to connect. And then we have to get quiet to listen. And in our culture, there's not a lot of quietness, you know, promoted, right? Right. And that's why the breakthrough sessions that I go through, I'm really talking to their unconscious mind. It is unconscious mind work. And that's part of the intuition, not only from outside from the universe, but from inside your own brain, which is where most of the things and the inner thoughts that you have comes from, to be honest. The conscious mind is just 126 bits per second. The unconscious mind is 2 million bits per second. So it's working over super fast. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So this, you know, I love what you're talking about, like creating the, you know, creating a vision and then holding that vibration as you're moving forward, because that's telling the universe, Hey, this is what I want. Bring, bring the resources, please. Versus if you say, I can't do this, then that's what the universe will give you. I can't do this. Cause I'm a little bit of a pragmatic. I like practical ways of doing things. So when you start with the action steps, I'm miss accountability, miss a little spreadsheet, keeping track, all that kind of stuff. And I think that makes people comfortable also is to know that someone is there and there is a, a an actual something keeping track that they can a look process at. and accountability yeah, process. tracker. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. We are heading into our last break here. Um, I'm Dr. Diane and you're listening to Find Your Fabulous. When we come back, we'll we'll 
continue to discuss this mission of helping women leap into their confidence. And uh, before we break, Lisa, once more, tell our listeners how they can reach out to you and find out about your services and get their hands on your special guide. Leap into confidence. Yes. So leapwithconfidence.com is a wonderful guide and it puts you really on my mailing list also so that you can get information about everything that I'm offering and some great tips that I share with everyone. Um, however, it is just three five-minute videos. You watch at your own pace because everybody has their own pace, again, taking baby steps, and then it helps you through each of the steps to be able to leap into something fun and new in your life with confidence. Leapwithconfidence.com. Beautiful. And to learn about my coaching services and free empowerment resources, you can check out my website at fullpowerwomen.com. And if you missed any information on this show or you want to catch a replay of my past shows, you can get access to all the episodes on my website. If you have questions, want to chat, you can email me at drdiane at fullpowerwomen.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, we're back on Find Your Fabulous with Dr. Diane, and I'm here with my special guest, women's transformational life coach, Lisa Andrea, and we are discussing the importance of building confidence in order to play our biggest games and put our gifts powerfully out into the world. And we ran out of time last section, Lisa, but I know you have a new program that's launching um, in early next year. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I have a little hint of it on my website on the one page. It's called Dream. Some of us women um, know what it is, our purpose and passion is in life. We've unfortunately maybe had a bad experience. And from that challenge has come what their, your purpose is. But it's good that several of us have not had to go through a big challenge in order to do that. But they want to understand what is your purpose and passion? What is it that you want to do to be living the life that you were meant to live? That's my dream method. So starting with the D, start out with discover. You begin by exploring your interests, your passions, your values. You're going to try new experiences. You're going to reflect on what brought you joy, like pay attention to what was meaningful to you. Mm. Also, it's a good step to elicit your values. What are your true values surrounding your life? Because other uh, instead of beliefs, which can be formulated by outside sources, right? Religious groups, your family, things like that. Your unique values in life are very unique to you. Right. So then you go to R, which is reflect. You take time to contemplate and do some int introspective. So now you have those values. So now you're going to consider your strengths and your weaknesses and what you start to envision for your future. This is where I have people journal daily or think about who you are, what your vision of success is, what are you grateful for? This is, now you're diving even more deeper. Did someone, when you were in high school, a teacher or something say, you're really great at this. You consider, you should consider doing it. Now you're going to dive deeper. Is that something really that you've actually enjoyed and thought about doing? Okay. I had a teacher that told me, oh, you're a great speaker. You should be a politician. No, that's okay. <laughs> But I will remember that. And I've taken that with me and had that sense of confidence simply because an English teacher told me I was a great speaker. So that has been nice to carry with me. The E is explore. So you're going to step out of your comfort zone. This is where the stepping out of your comfort zone starts. You're going to engage in activities. You're going to volunteer. You're going to take classes. You're going to seek mentorship. You're going to experiment with different paths to understand what actually resonates with you. Have you picked a couple things that interest you? Fine, then explore those and see which one actually resonates with you, which sits well, which is the thing that says, oh my God, this is it. The A is align. So you're going to go back and align and make sure that the one thing that you picked after you did your exploration aligns with your goals and your values that you already originally put together. And that's why it's important to revisit those values and update them as you go through life. You want to find that purpose that aligns with your values as a person and who you are as a person. And then think about how you can even contribute to the world around you in a positive way and, and you know, have your higher purpose. Because a lot of us women, we do want to help others. And so that's where our higher purpose comes in. Does everything align with what you want to do? And make money doing it, of course, because that's important. 
unless you're volunteering and a lot of women are in the retirement stage and just want to help out and volunteer. And that's wonderful. The M is for two things, motivate and manifest. So now you've, you've reached a point where you know what it is you want to do. You've got the steps. You've been taking them. You want to stay motivated and you want to turn, you want to be persistent about what you're doing and taking one step as, as much as you can every day, take a little step and then manifest what it is that you actually want. Now you know what it is. Create that avatar that you've created for yourself in five to 10 years, where you want to come, where you want to be, and now manifest that. And that's where I was talking about those um, personalized manifestation statements are about your ideal day, exactly how you want to be. You can use that to keep yourself motivated. And so you can continue to manifest your purpose in life by creating that statement in a very specific way, including the timeline that's realistic and attainable. Yeah. Those are so my program would be a group program and we would all be supportive of each other and go through each of these steps, have some assignments in between and really take the time to think about ourselves. What a novel idea. Mm. Oh, that sounds like a beautiful program. So Lisa, we've talked about why women lack confidence and how to begin to build it such as our mutual coaching programs here, um, Ladies Who Leap and Find Your Fabulous. But as we were prepping for the show, we were discussing the importance of women, and you did a little teaser on that earlier in the show, women learning to build each other up because the men aren't going to. We need to build each other up um, so that we can more fully step into our gifts and talents and share them in the world. We need to help each other find a place at the table. That means moving beyond some of the competitive mindsets that patriarchy kind of fostered to purposely keep us disconnected from each other and the very competitive nature of our capitalist society in general to a new way of building each other up. So why do you think mutual support is so important and how do you foster it with the women that you work with? Well, look, women have so much to contend with, with the opposite sex that, especially if you're in a male dominated field, which I know a lot of us are, I was also, that providing a sisterhood of support for each other is essential in removing your own imposter syndrome and negative self-talk and so being able to move ahead with effectiveness and confidence, we need to right. first understand and know that we have to support each other in order to overcome, overcome the opposite sex when it comes to work environments or even personal relationships and things like that. So I had mentored several younger women when I was working. And now in my coaching, my transformation coach, I have a, a Facebook group. And that is what I'm talking about. You need to have a community of women, whether it be, in my case, it's Ladies Who Leap Club on Facebook. We meet once a month and it's everyone being supportive. What is it that we can support you on? Talking about topics that, like in this case, my next one is about stress, lowering stress, because stress actually has been found scientifically to have a correlation with self-confidence. As your stress level goes up, your self-confidence goes down. So we're going to talk about lowering stress. That's just in one of the examples. And I usually have one of my podcast guests on the show, on the meetup that one month so that they can add their expertise even more than they did on the podcast. But a community of women, that, that is what's important. There are women's organizations, both internal to large companies, external. There are so many of them. There's local groups that you can go in person. Seek them out. Seek out the women that are trying to support other women and get in that community and make them your friends. Not, you don't have to make them. Everybody's open. Everybody wants, in those particular community environments with women, we all understand that we need to support each other, that that's where it is. Community is so important. And please don't be afraid to do that. No one is, no one is going to judge you for wanting to get out there and take that leap of faith in yourself and put yourself out there. It doesn't matter where you are at li in life. As long as you're around a community of women, we're all here to support you. And we need to keep that mindset. If you come across a woman that doesn't want to let you shine, that is someone that shouldn't be in your sphere. 
You need to understand that and be aware of that. That that's something I always tell people too. When you see, when you walk in and and meet someone, or you have a friend and you walk in and you tell them this great news of what you're doing in your life, and they kind of turn foggy, rather than lighting up and saying, "Oh my God, I'm so happy for you," and you know there's something there that you need to really pay attention to. That's that's a bit of a red flag. They may not be happy for you because they themselves feel insecure and they don't want you to shine because it makes them feel less than. Absolutely. And you know, Lisa, I have for the 30 odd years of my career, always run women's group of one kind or another, because I know how powerful that is. And while it may be hard for us to recognize our own gifts, talents, and strengths, when others mirror it back to us, like your English teacher, oh, you're really good at speaking we can see it, we can own it at a much deeper level. And that's the beauty of having women in community. And with that little bit, we, we are on a wrap. We have to end. But before we really sign off for today, Lisa, one more time, tell our listeners, our beautiful listeners, how to reach out to you and your explore your services. Ladieswholeap.com, leapwithconfidence.com, and look up Ladies Who Leap podcast in any format, any platform that you have, including YouTube. I'm Ladies Who Leap on the my YouTube page too. Pretty easy. <laughs> All right. And to learn more about my coaching services and free empowerment resources, you can check out my website at fullpowerwomen.com. And, you know, sign up for my women's community. Find your fabulous on Facebook. It's a private group, not just like Lisa. So not everybody can just hop in there and see what we're doing so that it feels nice and safe. And if you have any questions, you can also email me at drdiane at fullpowerwomen.com. I want to thank my guest, Lisa Andrea, for sharing such great information. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to the Find Your Fabulous show. I had a wonderful time. Please join me every first and third Monday of the month at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central, and 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Have a beautiful day, and we will see you back here next time on November 4th, the day before Election Day. And all the angst that is sure to produce, so perhaps, dear ones, we can ground and center together. Until next time, go out and find your fabulous, because you deserve no less. Bye-bye now. I'm your host, Dr. Diane, and you have been listening to Find Your Fabulous. It's time to ignite your full power. Tune in every first and third Monday of the month at 8 a.m. Pacific Time on Transformation Talk Radio for information, inspiration, and revelation to ignite your personal power. Connect with other bold, courageous, and powerful women who are ready to stop playing small and reclaim the passion and purpose that we all hold within us. The world needs you, O oh Power. To find your fabulous and ignite your inner goddess, visit fullpowerwomen.com.